So I wound up growing up in New Auburn, Wisconsin. And outside of New Auburn, there was this place called Mudbrook. It was really just a kind of poorly defined area, but it was, the, it was kind of the hinterlands. It was out in the Tules, as we called it. And there were lakes and swamps and stuff out there. And, and that's where all the strange fellers lived. And I remember in particular the Taylor brothers were a couple of brothers lived back there. And the Taylor brothers didn't have a car. So when it was time to go to town for groceries, they took their tractor. Problem was they didn't get along. And so the one brother would drive a tractor, and then they built a little doghouse on a trailer with the, with the door facing the rear. So the one brother would drive the tractor, and the other brother would sit in that little doghouse looking out the back. So they didn't have to talk to you. But eventually, uh, that area became uh, a recreational property, and, and things have changed there, and all those old characters are gone. So this is just a song I wrote uh, for those characters, and it's called Somewhere Out in Mudbrook. <laughs> Somewhere out in Mudbrook, out there in the sticks, lives the last authentic, completely unusual man. He's sick of the dead gum government, he's sick of his neighbors too. He's sick of me and he damn sure sick of you. He got a lumpy little dog and a shotgun by the bed. He got a bucket load of trouble in his head Someone from the county, they come by to count his teeth He said you'll find him over there behind the couch Two ladies from the church, they brought him chicken and a Bible verse and He said well thank you now pray for someone worse He got a greasy little dog and a shotgun by the bed He got a bucket load of trouble in his head Well he's fed up with the rednecks Their bellies and their chew And he's tired of clipboard hippies Telling him what to do And them mail order hikers With kayaks on their cars Mostly Subarus Tuned to NPR he got a lumpy little dog and a shotgun by the bed He got a bucket load of chaos in his head Watch and learn, my friend Well, I went out to see him the other day. He's just a sitting there on his porch. Billy was there too, actually. With his banjer. And a chicken. <laughs> two chickens. Billy and I are in the chicken business, by the way. I don't know, yeah. <laughs> Billy got me started in chickens, although I've had to, I've had to bail him out a little bit. Um, he had this rooster named Knuckles. <laughs> and Knuckles was wearing out Billy's hens <laughs> to no visible positive effect. So Billy says, his rooster's just ruining my hens. He says, I got to do that. I said, we'll just chop his head off. Man, I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, Billy's a Buddhist. So he actually used, he was a bouncer in a biker bar for years, and now he's a Buddhist, which I think is beautiful, don't you? I mean, because he can still throw you out of the bar, but then he'll say, go in peace. <laughs> so I wind up with Billy's rooster, Knuckles, 
And uh, he does the same, all he does is, is run my hens ragged and terrorize my children. So at first opportunity, I decided, well, he's going in the pot. But we have a big family get-together at our house. And, 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 and I, so when all the relatives show up, in, including my little nephew, Sidney, we call him Sid Rock. And all you really need to know about Sidney is uh, he's a stocky little feller. And as far as his general uh, attitude and outlook on life, this sums it up. He's helping my dad uh, carry firewood up from the basement one day. And little Sid and dad comes and he dumps his load of firewood in the wood box. And little Sidney comes behind him like this. And he goes up to the wood box and he dumps the wood. And then he goes, beep, beep, beep. Anyways, they have this big get together, and so I take all the kids out, I round them all up, and I take them out to the chicken yard. And I said, Don't mess with the chickens. I said, You can feed the chickens, you can look at the chickens, but don't chase them, don't mess with them. And I said, And if you mess with that rooster, he will take you. Because <laughs> he's got, he's loving to fight, and he's got the big old spurs, you know, on him. Well, sure enough, a little while later, Sid Rock shows up in the yard, and his shirt is all disheveled, and he's got red scratch marks like this. And he comes up to my mother, you know, the one who doesn't like anything off color, and he comes up to my mom, and he goes, Grandma. Grandma. She says, what's wrong? Grandma, that rooster, he spurned me. <laughs> and my mom said, he what? He hit me in the chest with his sperms. My mother said, oh, my. So he's just sitting there on his porch with Billy and the chicken and a banjo and whatever else. You know the difference between a banjo and a trampoline? You take your boots off before you jump on a trampoline. And the old guy says, you know, I don't know much. But I've been studying on it, and I do know, he says, I do know this. With beeps, it won't last. Flash runs out of gas. We all should spend a night on someone's grave. Man, if you can't learn from that, if that don't snap your cap, Drink the Kool-Aid, go on, enjoy the ride. He got a happy little dog and a shotgun by the bed. He got a teaspoon of hopeful in his head. Watch out, Chris. Somewhere out in Mudbrook, out there in the sticks, lives the last authentic, completely unusual man. 